text for this evening, Hebrews 11, verse 31. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. Hebrews 11, beloved, sets before us a great cloud of faithful witnesses, all of whom have fought the good fight, finished their course, and now entered into the heavenly kingdom which is above. And they fought that good fight, Hebrews 11 has told us again and again, by faith, by faith alone, through faith in God's promises. And they fought that good fight, we have seen again and again, in the most difficult of circumstances, in situations which appeared to be utterly impossible and hopeless. And now, having passed into the heavenly Canaan above, they encourage us from the pages of sacred scripture. Press on. Do not draw back. Do not be put off by the difficult circumstances of your life. Do not be put off by persecution and hardship. Believe God's promises. That's what we did. Press on. Be like us. And Rahab the harlot is another of the faithful witnesses recorded in this chapter. And she is unique in this choir of faithful witnesses because she is a Gentile, a pagan. She was not born, therefore, among the people of God. She was born outside of the commonwealth of Israel, born outside of the covenant community of the Old Testament. And she is one of only two women named in chapter 11, Sarah and Rahab. And last week we saw that Israel were standing before the high imposing walls of Jericho, the first major obstacle in their receiving of their inheritance. And we saw by faith that they obeyed God's instructions. And they walked around the walls of Jericho no fewer than uh, 13 times. And God gave them the city just as he had promised. The walls fell, we are told, by faith. But we must not imagine that faith was only exercised outside the walls of Jericho. Because God had worked faith miraculously and mysteriously within the heart of one of the people of that city. Faith existed in the city of Jericho. And God is no respecter of persons. He saves the most unlikely, the most unworthy in that city in a most remarkable way. Notice then, the harlot Rahab saved by faith. The harlot Rahab saved by faith. She is an undeserving sinner. She is a believing sinner. And she is a saved sinner. Rahab was a citizen of the city of Jericho at the time of its destruction. And our text describes the citizens of all that city in these words. Them that believed not. The idea there of believe not is more than simply unbelief, but it describes persistent, stubborn, obstinate opposition to God, rebellion against God. Jericho was a pagan city. The name of Jehovah was not known there, and it certainly was not acknowledged there. And Jericho was one of the chief cities of the land of Canaan, of the Canaanites, who were a people, really several peoples who were 
accursed. Remember what Noah said way back in Genesis 9, verse 25. Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall be, shall he be unto his brother. Canaan had been the grandson of Noah. And God cursed Canaan just after the flood. And this curse has worked its way through the family of Canaan in his descendants through the generations to this point when the Canaanites have filled the cup of their iniquity and God's judgment is about to fall upon Canaan. The Canaanites are about to be destroyed and in particular Jericho is about to be destroyed. And Rahab was a citizen of that city. That city under the curse of God. And Rahab was no different by nature than any of the other citizens of that city. She was an idolater. She was utterly godless. No doubt she grew up worshipping the idols of the men and women of Jericho and living in their sins. Not knowing Jehovah God, never worshipping Jehovah God, and therefore Rahab deserved the same judgment which fell upon the city. She deserved to be put to death by the sword. She deserved to be burned with fire. And she deserved to be thrown into hell, there to perish everlastingly. And she had therefore no right to expect that God would spare her. She had no claim on God's mercy. She was under the same curse, as it were, as everyone else in Jericho. And besides this, Rahab was called a harlot in our text. She was a notorious, flagrant, public sinner. The word harlot means exactly what it says. A prostitute or a whore. The Greek word is where we get our word pornography from. For nay, that's the Greek word for her. She was a for nay. She was a prostitute. She was a whore. Rahab kept an inn in the city, for sure. But she was no common hotelier. She had a business selling her body for sex, living in gross disobedience to the seventh commandment of God's law. And her harlotry, her being a whore, was not a secret either. Almost always in scripture she is referred to this way. The harlot. Joshua 2 verse 1. And they went and came into a harlot's house. Named Rahab. That's the first time she's mentioned she's called a harlot. Joshua 6 17. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. Joshua 6 22. Go into the harlot's house. Joshua 6 25. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive. James 2.25, Rahab the harlot is commended there. And of course our text says, the harlot, that's first, Rahab. This Rahab then was a well-known public sinner in the city of Jericho, which itself was under the curse of God. And if you had traveled to Jericho in those days and asked, where does Rahab live? men would have been able to direct you to her. Oh, Rahab, well she's the harlot. Oh yes, she lives over there on the wall of Jericho. You'll find her, you'll not miss her. And perhaps some people in the city of Jericho looked down with a certain amount of disgust upon Rahab, the harlot. Because no matter how wicked and depraved the city is, the whores, the prostitutes, are usually at the bottom of the 
social ladder. And there are always people in the most wicked of cities who consider themselves to be better than whores, better than harlots. And this one, the harlot Rahab, is the one of whom we read, she perished not. She perished not. It's nothing short of a miracle then that God had one of his elect in Jericho, that accursed city, given over to utter destruction, and that the one he had, who was his elect, was Rahab the harlot. How can it be explained that Rahab, in distinction from everyone else in the city of Jericho, was favored with this salvation? And the answer is very simple. Grace. Free, undeserved, sovereign, effectual grace. And God so ordered all of the events in the life of Rahab the harlot so that she could be, before him, a trophy of his grace. So he could display in Rahab the harlot the depth of his love and mercy. And so in God's providence, Rahab was born in Canaan. Not Canaan, the promised land, after the Israelites came into the promised land, but Canaan, the accursed Canaanites. She was not born then in the camp of Israel. And so she could not say, I have salvation because I was born an Israelite. I grew up among God's people, and that's why I have salvation. She did not. She was not. In God's providence as well, she lived the life of a wicked harlot, so that God's grace could be magnified in her. So God could be glorified in stretching forth his hand, as it were, and lifting her up from the depravity and misery of her sinful life. She could not say, I was saved because of my life of good works. She had not. She was an idolatress, she was a harlot, a whore. In God's providence, she lived in a city under the death sentence. And she could not claim exemption from this death sentence, but God sovereignly plucked her as a brand from the burning. Rahab, then, was a Gentile, a pagan idolater, a depraved whore who deserved nothing but the wrath of God, and yet God loved her. Before the foundation of the world, before Rahab was born, before she had done anything good or evil, God set his love upon this Rahab. And he wrote her name in the Book of Life named her as one of his elect church. And God decreed in the fullness of time that his beloved son, Jesus Christ, would come into the world to die upon a cross, to lay down his life for this miserable, wretched harlot, would blot out all of her sins on that cross and purchase for her the right for eternal life. And at the appointed time, God sent his Holy Spirit from heaven into the heart of Rahab the harlot, regenerated her, and gave her faith in him, so that she feared Jehovah. 